UFC belt with me. We're back. MMA locker room here with Pig Dogs, and I'm going to be going over this week's UFC 303 card, headlined by uh, Yuri Prakowska taking on Alex Pereira, uh, part two. Hey, we, are not, we don't got Conor McGregor on the main event, but we got a lot of good fights to break down. Like always, I'm going to go over the best bets for you guys. I'm going to give you guys my picks, my predictions. And at the end of it, I'm going to give you guys a parlay to play so we can all get paid. All right. Now, look, last week, let's talk about it, man. Robert Whitaker, main event, UFC Saudi Arabia. How'd you guys do? We came through on that one, man. I mean, I yeah, it was too good not to get it, man. The price was right. Minus 135. And he knocked out Ikram Alaskarov in the first round, man. What was your guys' best bet of the week last week, man? And, hey, What's your guys' best bet of the week for this week's UFC card? Who's betting on some dogs out there? Who got a few favorites out there? And hey, man, who got a parlay? If you got anything for this week's UFC card, put it in the comments below. If it wins, I'll shout you guys out. And it's going down because this week is UFC International Fight Week going down in Las Vegas. You know where I'm going to be. That's Las Vegas, folks. So you guys gonna catch me there. UFC Fight Night International. It's it, it's only right, man. So well, I can't wait to get there. But hey, man, let's go ahead and get over the picks and get you guys started on how to get some money in your pocket. All right, man. The first fight of the night is gonna be a great one, a good one. Ricky Simone taking on Vinicius Oliveira. Ricky Simone is opening up a minus two twenty favorite. Nope. Now he's all the way up to a minus two forty favorite in there. When it comes down to it, he's gonna have the better fight resume. He fought everybody pretty much in the division on the up and coming, trying to make that top uh, five, top uh, top ten level. Uh, you know, on top of it, he's gonna have the better cardio. We've seen Ricky Simone push that pace. Uh, he's like the guy that likes to go out there, chain wrestle, get his opponents down to the ground. But when it comes down to it. Is he trustworthy? That's what you got to think about. Because sometimes when Ricky Simone goes out there, he just doesn't shoot for the takedown. He averages about five takedowns per uh, fight. But as of late, he hasn't been able to do that with his opponents. And he's been staying on the feet. But Nises Oliveira, he looked good, man. He's made his UFC debut in one of the better fights of the year with one of the most stunning knockouts of the year. He struggles with takedowns, though. That's the thing. So for Ricky Simone, he's going to need to get those takedowns going. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, man. I like the dog in this fight, man. I think I think Vinicius Oliveira is one of the more exciting fighters in the division right here. I like the way that he strikes. Uh, he's unorthodox with it. Switch stance fighter, uh, you know, and he's averaging about, you know, five uh, strikes landed per minute compared to Ricky Simone, who's definitely not doing the striking thing. So I'm going to go ahead and call it right now, man. I'm going with the dog in this one, man. I think the dog's out the cage. Give me Vinicius Oliveira. I think he finishes Ricky Simone. I'm going to go ahead and say he finishes him inside the distance. Uh, go ahead and get your plus money to start off the fight card on that one. All right, next fight taking place. Look, for the people out there, you're going to have a few favorites on the card that's going to be chalky price. So sometimes you got to chalk the talk and talk the chalk. And that's what we're doing in this one. We're Ray, we're Ray Sarua taking on Carlos Hernandez. Ray Sarua, minus 500 on the books. Japanese fighter coming in. He's a wrestling oriented fighter. Averaging a lot of takedowns per fight. Okay, how many? Over four takedowns he's averaging per fight. Carlos Hernandez, he struggles with the takedowns in his fights. So, you know what the path to victory is going to be for him. It's going to be to take him down in here. And I actually think he's going to be able to do it. I'm calling it round two. He gets it done. Race a rule, putting on for Japan. Let's go ahead and get it done in here. Watch the kid. I think he has potential, uh, especially in this division too. Just wait till the striking gets a little bit more improved. But the wrestling is there, and I think he's going to finish him. Let's go ahead. Next fight taking place. Heavyweights. Andre Olofsky. Man, this guy's been fighting for a decade. Taking on Martin Boudet. Andre Olofsky, big underdog in this one, man. And plus 200 on the books coming back against Martin Boudet, who's like a minus 260 favorite. The money's coming in on Olofsky, man. We're hearing that this is his last fight. Retirement, right? Usually, you want to bet against him, but... I think if this one goes to the scorecard, Olowski could maybe win because he usually does. And Martin Boudet, if he stays out on the side and lets Olowski dance around and lets him fight his fight, he might be able to win on the scorecards, right? Right. But I don't think so, man. I think Martin Boudet gets it done. He didn't look good in his last fight out. He got finished, I think, um, earlier on. But this fight is a fight to where I think he can bounce back and finish Andre Olofsky in there. I'm going to go say he finishes him inside the distance in this one. Um, you know, he can do it on the feet or he can, might even sub him. Who knows? Round two, I think he don't get into round three, though. Hmm? Matter of fact, 
Round three can st I don't know, man. It's crazy, man. I would just say Martin Boudet wins. Okay, that, that, that fight's tricky, man. If it goes to the scorecards, I can see the judges robbing us and giving it to Orlovsky. Next fight taking place. First women fight going to be taking place, man. On the early prelims, Jillian Robinson, representing Canada, taking on Michelle Watterson Gomez, a.k.a. Karate Hottie. Michelle Watterson. Man, she's on an 0-4 losing streak, right? She hasn't won a fight since I don't know when. She cut off her hair, thinking that's going to help. I don't think it is, man. Um, Jillian Robinson, man. She's the smoking red hot head out there, man. When I mean smoking, because that's what she's doing, man. She's out there blazing, man. She she believes in the 420 cannabis crew. But in this fight, she's going to try to go out there and smoke Karate Hottie, man. If she can, she's going to have to get her down to the ground. If she can't. She's going to have a tough task on her hand. Karate Hottie's path to victory is use that karate type stance. Use that sidekick. Keep Jillian Robinson off balance. So when she tries to go in there and close for the takedown, she's not able to close the distance. Jillian Robinson doesn't set up her takedowns the most cleanest um, and the most uh, technical. Sometimes it's just there and, you know, she's able to get you. She's not setting them up with clean striking or anything like that. This fight, I think, is going to go to the scorecards in there, man. Um, And if it does in here, the strikes from Michelle Watterson is going to way outnumber Jillian Robinson here. I like Jillian Robinson earlier on when the fight came out. I did uh, do something with her at minus 160, but now if money's coming in, I'm going to tell you guys to stay off it in here, you know, because there is a path to victory for Michelle Watterson to get this one done. Next fight taking place, Peyton Talbot taking on Giannis Gamori. All right, man, Peyton Talbot, for the people that don't know, man, he's the future in this division, right? That's how he's been looking in there, man. The way that he fights, the way that he moves in this cage, ain't nothing to like. He moves and does stuff that we never seen. You grab his leg, he does a backflip off you, and then goes over your back, spins over you, and then kicks you out and knocks you out. Just that. Tough task he had on this fight that really proved it. Cameron Simon, uh, he went up against last time out, and he was able to get the job done. In this one, he's a big favorite. Opened up a minus 450, minus 500, all the way up to a minus 1600 on here. <sighs> Man, Giannis Gamori, he, he's, he's a good fighter. Everybody's in the UFC. You're a good fighter if you're in the UFC, right? So I'm not going to look at this and say he's a bum or anything like that. To me, the price tag is off. I think Peyton Talbot should be able to get the job done in round three. So I'm going to go ahead and say Peyton Talbot finishes him in round three in here, though. I do like Peyton Talbot a lot. I did do a parlay with him earlier on when he was at that minus 450 price tag. Anything over that, I'm not doing that. All right, next fight taking place. We got a good one, folks. Charles Jordan taking on Gene Silva, man. Gene Silva made his UFC debut against Weston Wilson for the people that's not familiar with them. 12 and 2 record taking on Charles Jordan. The opening odds had Charles Jordan like a minus 140 favorite. Now it's coming down, man. It's coming down to like a minus 115, minus 120. Money's been coming in on Gene Silva. Um, he's been the dog. He's the guy that's going out there, walking slow to the cage, barking at his opponents when he's in there, and he's has that alter personality, that alter ego, you know, and I like that type of stuff. When you're fighting, you need that type of stuff, that confidence, that type of, you know, energy. Charles Jordan, they call him Air Jordan. He's lethal, man. He can hit you with flying knees. He can finish you. He can submit you. And here, I think, I think wherever you guys bet it at, I think it's right. I think the money's right on Jordan. I think the money's kind of Okay with Silva, you know, I, I liked him when he was at that plus 115 spot. I did look at him earlier on, you know, at that. Now he's coming out to a pick him in here. Sometimes you got to play the, the fights and see where the money's coming in at and just follow the money sometimes, you know. Um, in this one, the pick though, the fight IQ, got to go with uh, Jordan, the finish ability. I like both of them in there. Um, but the pick, I got to go with my first instinct, man. It's Gene Silver. I think he's going to go uh, go ahead and get it done in here. Um, but, like, for the people out there, hey, if you guys have been charged Jordan, man, I'm, I'm not mad at that at all, man. Um, uh, when the fight is, uh, is lined like this, I pick him price. And I actually think Charles Jordan, sometimes he doesn't go out there and look impressive. But... When you give him a small task like this, he can go out there and finish the guy and then hop up on the cage and stuff. So, man, stick with me, man. By, by the time the fight starts, I might, I don't know, man. I might just change up, man. We still got uh, some press interviews to do and stuff like that. And I got to see what they're talking about in media. So, stay tuned, man. All right, next fight taking place. Cup Swanson taking on Andre Feely, two veterans in the game. All right, Andre Feely, man, it's crazy. Big favorite, minus 250, plus 205 on Cup Swanson. Andre Feely lost his last time out, and he's coming back a big favorite. Cup Swanson won his last time out against Hakeem Dawawadu. He's coming back a big underdog. In a fight that everybody knows that he really lost against him, though. But, hey, the judges gave it to him. Now, in this one... 
The line is off a little bit. Um, I'm going to be honest in here. I'm going to just give you guys the pick. I think Andre Feely gets it done. If he was a minus 140, minus 160, that's where it should be lined at. There's no way he should be a minus 250 in here. Um, but, you know, Cub Swanson might be on that retirement fight. Hey, hit me up with the likes and let me know what you guys are betting on tonight. All right, we're back. The next fight that we're going to be talking about is a good one, folks. Joe Pfeiffer steps in and he's back, taking on Mark Andre Oberia. Joe Pfeiffer opened up at like a minus 260, minus 270. Now he's up to a minus 300 favorite. Let's talk about his last fight out against Jack Hermanson. He got put to the test, okay? He got the main event spot and he didn't show up, okay? He was a favorite in there, and I think Jack Hermanson won by decision, I want to say. So he left a lot of people in the MMA community feeling a certain way, right? Not me. I just think it was a tall task. And, you know, you're not going to be able to win every fight. Mark andre Barry out, though. He's been looking good in his last couple of fights out. I want to say he's like 3-1 and one or something in his last fights out. Um, You know, got a win over Eric Anders. Um, And then, um, you know, he is coming off a loss right now. But this is the type of thing. I think Mark andre Barry out is known for curling up and shelling up like that instead of actually blocking punches you don't want to do that with joe pfeiffer i think joe pfeiffer is going to be able to win inside the distance even if not i think joe pfeiffer would even be able to win by the scorecard i like joe pfeiffer in this spot to bounce back um mark andre barry out i have been able to make money with him earlier on um and i actually think the line is off in here i think you know it should be maybe like a minus two two to one you know minus 210 on the books in here um mark andre alberry is a live dog in here uh, and this goes if this goes past that second round in there you know both these fighters are fighters that could finish their opponents but i gotta go with five for the win inside the distance and get that one all right now the main card kicking off we got a good one to talk about the first fight to kick off the main card is ian machado gary 14 and 0 taking on michael venom page Back in the UFC, made his UFC debut against Kevin Holland. The opening odds got Ian Gary as a minus 130. Now, he's all the way up to a minus 155 out there. Look, this is going to be a striker's delight. Both these guys got awkward styles the way that they like to go out there. Michael Venom Page keeps his hands down and strikes awkwardly. Ian Machado Gary is just going out there striking, Um, you know, um, all from all aspects. He's going low. He's going high. You know, he's mixing in a few elbows every now and then. But when it comes down to it, I think he's going to get the takedowns in here and try to implement them a little bit in here. I like both these fighters. I'm a fan of both of these guys. I've been high on Ian Gary in the UFC. Um, and I think he has the tools to get it done in this one. But hear me out. Michael Venom Page, I'm a fan of him. Watched him all the time in Bellator now. If he gets past Ian Gary... If he's the only guy to defeat Ian Gary, I'm going to say, man, I, I just, I, I've been wrong on him the first time in the UFC. Let's, let's see, man. But um, I actually think if he gets past Ian Gary, I'm, I'm probably not going against Michael Venom Page for a long time, folks. But uh, yeah, the, the bet is Ian Gary in this one. Um, yeah, man. Um, and that minus 130 that we bet him at earlier on in the week, when he's coming in up to a minus 155. Let's, let's go ahead and get it, man. Next fight taking place. Speaking about money coming in, Macy Chason, 10 and 3, taking on my Brandon Silva. All right, man. Macy Chason, she was an underdog in this spot. Now she's the favorite. I mean, my Brandon Silva opened up like a minus 130, minus 140. Now Macy Chason is the favorite in this spot, folks. Usually, you got to follow where the money goes in the bets, right? You do. But in this one, let's talk about Mara Brandon Silva, man. She fought for the belt her last time out against Raquel Pennington in a fight to her. I thought she was going to be able to get it done. She was on a winning streak, finishing everybody inside the distance. She wasn't able to get it done in there. You know, it went to the scorecards in there. Um, This is a bounce back spot, a three-round fight. I think the price is right. Uh, minus 110 I'm getting for Silva, and she was a big favorite earlier on. I might even be able to get her a plus money odds. Yes, Macy Chason is going to have the height advantage, the reach advantage, you know, um, you know, cleaner striking. But the finish ability, got to go with Mara Brennan Silva. All she has to do is take your back, take your arm. And if she does, she's probably going to take it home with her. She's taking off a limb. I like Mara Brennan Silva in this spot. The price is right, minus 110. Let's go for the win. All right, next fight taking place. We got Roman Delice taking on Anthony Smith. Roman Delice, minus 150 on the books, okay? This fight just got thrown around because Anthony Smith was supposed to be fighting all type of other people. Who was it originally? I forget. Was it Jamal Hill? 
Wesley Oberg. Ah, man, they, they switched out his opponent so many times in here. Roman Delice steps up on short notice in here. Um, Anthony Smith was looking good in his last fight out. Uh, he was able to get the win against Petrino. Uh, he was able to get the sub in the spot that I actually thought Petrino was going to get the win. But that's how it goes sometimes. You're not able to predict everything. Petrino didn't have his mind right, went for a reckless takedown, and just got subbed. And that's it. Roman Delice, though, man, he's a minus 150 favorite. I've never been high on Anthony Smith, man, but both these guys, it's going to be hard to pick who's going to win the fight because they don't like to strike, man. Roman Delice averages like three strikes per minute. Anthony Smith is around the same numbers on here. Um, the takedowns got to go in favor for Roman Delice. Me, I'm going to go with Roman Delice in this spot, man. Uh, stepping up on short notice, if he can get him down to the ground earlier on, I think he can finish him. Uh, if this goes past the second round, I can, think, I can see Anthony Smith uh, you know, um, making it a lot more questionable to go with the scorecards. But the pick is Roman Delice in this one. All right, man. We got the Coleman event coming up. Diego Lopes taking on Brian Ortega. Diego Lopes minus 150 on the books. Brian T. City Ortega. Last fight out, man. We made money with him. Cashed as him as an underdog. He was able to get that fight against Yaron Rodriguez uh, and get that win. This fight... Diego Lopes' last fight was against Sadiq Yusuf in a fight that, you know, we had to go with Sadiq Yusuf because the dog money was enticing, and we just didn't think that he should have been an underdog in that spot. But it showed who was the favorite for a reason. It was Diego Lopes, and that's because he was the more vicious fighter out there. I think it's going to come down to this, man. I like both these fighters, but I like Diego Lopes, man. The minus 130 that he opened up at, now he's up to that minus 150, uh, you know, buck 50. I think he's the more, uh, you know... Uh, finesse fighter to finish his opponent with more ways meaning he can finish him on the ground he's been showing that as of late going out there storing a lot more power trying to out put you out on the feet not just take you down and then on the jujitsu i mean he's top tier but you're going up against brian ortega so i'm not gonna even go there but brian ortega has passed the victory too let's see what diego lopes does when he gets taken down and brian ortega is one of the better wrestlers out there with the jiu-jitsu uh skills to submit opponents i'm not mad at anybody betting on brian ortega or diego lopes in this spot um you can make a case for both these fighters in here but i just gotta go with the more fighter that i think is up and coming ascending you would say you know and i think right now diego lopes is ascending right now you know so i'm gonna take him in this spot and i mean with that being said i don't think it's going to score cards it's only three rounds and um let's i think he's gonna finish him so i say diego lopes finishes uh brian ortega uh and then this is one thing that you guys got to keep in mind for this fight brian ortega already mentioned that this is his last fight at this weight class he's gonna be moving up um when you're doing that already and you're throwing that out there before this fight who I, mean, I don't know it's just it's just weird to me a little bit you know so even with the win you're like all right cool I'm, I'm out of this division i'm moving up it doesn't really make that much sense to me you know um but what does make sense is diego lopes at that minus 130 price tag all right now let's go on to the main event but before we do that man i need everybody to let me know out there when was the last time you guys been to the ufc events when was the last time you've been to any fight events? It's UFC Fight Week International. It's Las Vegas. And you know where I'm going to be. So let's go ahead and get it started, man. The main event. It's going to be a rematch, man. You got Alex Pereira, Poulton, the champ, taking on Yuri Prokoska. 30 wins and 4 losses. All right. Pierre is a minus 130 favorite, okay? Pierre, Prokoski, if you get him out of plus 115. Let's talk about the first fight first. The first fight, all right, man, it was entertaining. Yuri Prokoski was looking good in the first round. I think he went for a takedown, got him down, um, you know, and he looked like he won the round one. Round two, looked like he was looking good, moving, and then he got caught and got knocked out. Um, and then, you know, that that's that. That's what Alex Pereira possesses, that one-punch type of ability to knock out any opponent, right? But I still got to go back to war in this one, man. I, I, I like Yuri Pekoska in, that, in, the, in the first fight, and I like him in this spot, man. Give me the dog odds in here. I think when it comes down to it, both these guys have finish ability. But Yuri Pekoska is a little bit more polished, meaning that he's fought in the better MMA fighters, um, you know, for a longer amount of time. And, you know, he's a little bit unhinged you know he's doing stuff unorthodox and i just love that type of thing about him i'm not mad at alex Pereira. he's proved me right and he's proved me 
wrong a lot of times. So I, I mean, he proved me wrong a lot of times. So I'm, I'm done, you know, going against Alex Pereira and thinking he's not going to win fights. He has that ability. He's that good, folks. But in this one, I just think Yuri Prokoska can actually mix in the takedowns a little bit. And he has that finish ability in there. And then Pierre can get caught. He keeps his hands real low, real low. And Yuri Prokoska, I think he wants that belt back. So I'm going to go with the code of the samurai and go with the dog money and say the dog's out the cage in that one, man. The samurai is getting his back back, his belt back. Yuri Prokoska for the win. All right, man. Let's go over the best uh, parlay for you guys to get paid out here. All right, man. I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Um... I like uh, I like Ray Suhor. I like man. I'll be honest with you guys, Joe Pfeiffer, and that's it, man. I'll close it on that, man. That'll be my two leg parlay for you guys right there. Take Ray Suhor and Joe Pfeiffer, parlay them two. Meet me at the window and let's get paid. All right, man. Uh, it's UFC bet with me. It's us against the bookies. Let's beat them up and take their money. MMA locker room here, part of Pick Dogs.